I'm Barbara Mintzis. Uh, I work at the University of Sydney in the Faculty of Pharmacy. I'm Lara Golagli. I work at the World Health Organization in Geneva. Show more spine, uh, in a way I think of it in terms of osteoporosis and so it's a kind of a funny message because osteoporosis has sort of misrepresented what's happening in the spinal column. Uh, there, you know, the, the whole sort of naming of compressions as vertebral fractures, uh, actually is, uh, people misunderstand that. They think that it's a break in bone. And then it's the other that uh, a lot of what we have to say in uh, speaking out about overdiagnosis is sort of um, coming out against received wisdom in terms of people's beliefs that uh, you know, early detection is better, more screening is better, that uh, if a test is not being paid for, well, that's a government that is cutting back on services to the public. So Show More Spine is speaking up and, and actually uh, explaining what's really going on. So Show More Spine, for me, is an opportunity to go back to WHO with the little squidgy guideline and give it to the chair of the Guideline Review Committee to encourage him in his thankless task of trying to ensure that all the guidelines that come out of WHO are, do in fact have spine, are in fact in line with the evidence, and um, are not swayed by conflicts of interest. Um, the uh, redefinition of normal male aging <laughs> and gradually declining testosterone levels as being uh, a condition called low T. It's a problem in which there actually are a group of drugs that were approved for a legitimate reason, that there are some men who have physiological problems, they have congenital problems, they may have developed a pituitary tumor and they need testosterone therapy. And this is a case where this group of drugs has been massively over-marketed. No matter where you put the threshold, you'll end up finding that some people are on the wrong side of the threshold. And there's a very, um, there's very little relationship between where those thresholds have, are set and any symptoms or actual problems. I actually meet just about all the criteria for low T. Um, falling asleep after dinner, not playing sports as well as I did in my 20s. Well, maybe that's not true because I never sp played sports very well. Uh, you know, are you doing not very well at, like are you, are you kind of feeling like your performance at work has gone down? Very vague questions that uh, really have, you know, the likelihood of them being related to testosterone level is very low. And actually that's even been tested looking at this questionnaire. So this is one of those questionnaires that'll be on a, a website that's sponsored by a pharmaceutical company. Uh, you end up with a result that says, uh, go talk to your doctor. Because it can lead to more harm than benefit. So, so men can get prescribed these drugs when they're very unlikely to benefit. And uh, they, there is some evidence of serious cardiac risks, heart, heart disease risks. Yes, at WHO, because we work with governments around the world, we have on one hand the governments in high income countries that have a problem with trying to achieve efficiency and equity in their health systems, and those in the low and middle income countries where people don't get a diagnosis, and so they're either all treated at once, whether they have a condition or not, or they don't receive any treatment at all. Alzheimer's disease, or all the, the spectrum of various cognitive uh, states that lead people to want to diagnose Alzheimer's disease. Well, we're concerned, obviously, for the individuals concerned, because getting a diagnosis of something that you don't really have or are unlikely to suffer from is not something that anyone needs or wants and causes harm, can cause harm in itself. And then on a societal level, we're concerned about resources going towards the worried well when they should be going towards the sick. Until very recently, Alzheimer's disease was something that society sort of agreed that the person had, and you could only confirm it at autopsy. So you, you lived, you, 
you had to live with this doubt of how much a person's normal sort of loss of cognitive function was accelerated and whether that acceleration was something you could do something about or not. So families had to cope. And now what they're being told is that not only can you identify Alzheimer's before its onset, you can positively diagnose it, and you can take drugs to either slow the onset of symptoms or affect the severity, none of which is true. Can, can I make a comment since yeah. we're sitting side by yeah. side that I think you know that your statement on the Alzheimer's disease drugs would be very helpful to also a lot of high income um, governments that made some very poor decisions, often under pressure, an enormous amount of pressure about those drugs. Because we, so I was working with a group, the Therapeutics Initiative, that was reviewing those drugs when they were be being considered for reimbursement. And uh, our provincial government took a very unusual step of not reimbursing them because there wasn't evidence of efficacy. I am involved in research actually looking at it and, um, and I think making visible what's happening. My research is often helpful for policy-oriented campaigns. So one example would be that I've done research looking on the effects of direct-to-consumer advertising on prescribing decisions and medicine use. And I think that that was quite helpful when there was a discussion in the European Union about whether that would be introduced. It was helpful to actually have research evidence looking at what, what was the effect. So WHO works on this issue in a number of areas, one of which is the essential medicines list. These have been around for about 30 years now, and many, many countries that don't have national regulatory agencies or health technology assessment capacity use the essential medicines list as a way to procure um, drugs for their health systems. So ineffective medicines such as those for Alzheimer's disease are not on those lists. So that in itself sends a very strong signal to countries that these are not medicines um, that WHO has considered effective for the condition for which they're indicated.